I'm Matt Pittman, CEO and pit master of Meat Church. Throughout my barbecue life, I've been lucky enough to make some amazing relationships with some of the top pit masters in the world. For this series, I've convinced them to share with you guys some of their best kept secrets. So fire up your pits, it's time to meet the masters. Well, this barbecue joint was recently named number one on the prestigious Texas Monthly Top 50 Barbecue Joint List. My buddy Johnny's over here in the smokehouse. He's gonna show you guys beef ribs today, so let's go check it out. Super cool for me. Uh, Johnny and I have actually cooked beef ribs together at a barbecue school we did down at Mill Scale yep. in Lockhart. I've even got the bottle to prove it. The little, <laughs> the little gift. Yeah. Um, so I thought this would be pretty neat because uh, I, you know, we kind of know each other's process. Uh, we both cook on Mill Scale offsets, which is what we're flanked by here, mm -hmm. and we're actually going to cook these on a Mill Scale. Um, and you know, before we go any further, it's kind of come to my attention a lot of people may not know what the Texas monthly top 50 barbecue joint list is it is the most prestigious list in barbecue in my opinion uh, people spend their entire lives trying to get on it previous number ones have been Franklin barbecue snows barbecue and Johnny and his co-owners here at Goldie's uh, hit number one in October yep October of last year uh, it's a really great place. It's kind of in the middle of nowhere in Kennedale, Texas, just outside of Fort Worth. You got to come, but get here early. So yep. uh, I'm super stoked. Yeah, me too. Me too. It's been a, it's been a great experience. Yeah. It's been a really How, great how's experience. things been since hitting that list? Uh, good. Good. Every every uh, weekend it gets a little bit easier. We're we're figuring out how to make this place uh, more uh, efficient and and run smoother and better every week. And we're making the food better every single week too. I promise. That's saying something. I, if you've never been here. What I always say about Goldie's is nobody makes the classics better, um, but everything is made from scratch. All their sides, they even make their own bread, like crew of guys in their <laughs> 20s making their own bread. So you come here, yes. I've never heard one negative comment about Goldie's, and that's saying something. Yeah, so, yeah absolutely. Let's just dive right in. I'm going to turn it over to you, and okay. uh, you just tell us all things beef ribs. All right, so today uh, I want to mm -hmm. show you how to trim them, season them, put them on, smoke them. Uh, basically, uh, trim-wise, I don't do a whole lot. Uh, just kind of cut these corners, kind of round them out because I'm not going to wrap them throughout the whole sm uh, process. So uh, I want to round those corners out a little bit. Um, and then we got our trusty rub right here. This is uh, just our beef rub rub that we use here at Goldie's. Um, and I got some spritz. This is what we're going to use instead of a binder. Basically, I just spritz. Uh, it's a lot more efficient than when you're doing, you know, 20, 30 racks of beef ribs you, uh, and brisket or whatever you're doing. You don't want to, I don't like using the bottle binders. I like using the spritz binder. So yeah, um, so yeah that's pretty much what we're going to be doing. Throw them on the uh, new 500 gallon mill scale. And, and just cranking them up. Beef ribs, also known as plate ribs or short ribs, three bone ribs. These are, this is a big rack. This is very yeah, thick. Yeah, it's, it's really, really big. Uh, these are our Creekstone uh, beef ribs. Creekstone, Creekstone beef great ribs. product. Yeah. We use their brisket and their beef ribs. Yeah, okay. it's, they're very good, very good. How often do you serve beef ribs here at Goldie's? Uh, every day, we do Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We do uh, about 20 racks a day. So that's 20, uh, 20 racks a day. So that's about 60 bones a day. And awesome. that, all that, uh, that all that 500 gallon does is, is cook beef ribs. You have a mill scale just dedicated <laughs> to smoking beef ribs. It's just our that's that's what the overflow we needed for uh, after getting number one. We already had the 2,000 gallon mill scales, but uh, we couldn't fit the beef ribs on there. So um, yeah, it's pretty much just for cooking beef ribs. That's awesome. <laughs> well, I'm gonna let you jump right in and talk about trimming. And uh, I think while you're getting your gloves on and getting ready. Um, one of the things I find unique, I see a lot of people on social media, they're backyard guys, and they like, do like a really aggressive trim. They trim all the fat, all the silver skin, show all the red meat. I know you say you do it a little bit different. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, pretty much going to leave all this. Uh, so the first thing I do when I'm, coming out, when I'm coming out of the package is I just kind of score the back. I'm not taking the membrane off. I'm just scoring it so it, it cooks a little bit better, and it, it's re you really won't notice it once you get it. So Why um, do you leave the membrane just to let people know? Because I do uh, the same thing. Uh, cause I, it's just too kind time consuming and you really wouldn't notice a, a difference between, uh, there being a membrane and them not being a membrane. I, I feel like on a pork rib, you really notice when there's a membrane, but on yeah. a beef rib, you don't notice. And it's like the only thing holding those together. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Once it, once, once it kind of shrinks up and it's, and yeah, it, the, the small bone usually will fall out, but, um, it's not too bad. Uh, no, uh, just Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, thank you, thank you. 
I mean, you know, Perfect. it's reality TV. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right, I'll let you jump into it. We'll see them tomorrow. Yeah, right. <laughs> Hope so. Um, so yeah, so uh, I'm not, I'm not, I really don't do anything. I score the back. Um, you can see right here, this is like a, a thin corner of the beef rib. Uh, I don't really want that because that will burn up and it won't be delicious. So I'm just, uh, I'm just kind of taking it down to where it's a more like flat, like a, a harder surface to get crispy, basically. That's pretty much more it. even cook. I guess. Yeah, more. Yeah, and then uh, yeah, pretty much that's all I do to every corner. Just kind of angling it down so that they're thicker and uh, they're not the the corners of the meat is is what basically will get crispy. So you just don't really want those. And we're done. That's so it. You're comfortable leaving it all, which I love. Fat's flavor. Fat is flavor. We love we love the fat here. We we spend a lot of time uh, rendering fat. I mean that's our main focus every time we throw something on is is to to render the fat. Um, the render the fat is going to make the flavor more. Uh, more like booming it's going to be yeah. very flavorful because the fats rendered if, if the under the fat is, is a lot like tallow where it'll bland out your meat yeah so the the better it is rendered the more flavorful it is like i said we don't wrap these so we have a almost 100 percent shot of rendering all this fat i love it i think you know especially even on brisket when i go take a bite of brisket and it's got that rendered fat on top that's the best bite in barbecue same yeah. thing with the beef rib yes all right i agree and I'm gonna spritz with a little bit of water, a uh, little, <laughs> little bit of water, a uh, little bit of water, and Worcestershire sauce. This is much more efficient in a restaurant operation instead of having to slather and do all that. Yeah, basically, you're still kind of rubbing it in, but I, I, I promise you, it's, a, it's a, it, it is more efficient. You could, and especially when I, when I'm usually doing this, I'm usually doing almost 20 at the same time. Yeah. So I put them all out on the table. I spritz them all with water, go through and rub them all in, and uh, like I said, it's a lot more efficient. I'm excited to talk about your seasoning. Um, I actually love how you season and replicate some of what you do at home. So yeah, yeah. So basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this pepper. I'm going to put it on first. I, I'm good to start seasoning, right? Like absolutely. Okay. I can just. Okay. This is coarse, like six, probably sixteen. Mesh uh, yeah, pepper. sixteen yeah. mesh pepper. This is what we use it here at the restaurant. Uh, basically, I'm just going to pinch it and. Talk to me about why you do pepper first, because I know this, but I think it's I think it's a really good teaching point for people at home. I think uh, the pepper first. If you usually um, when we have our mixed rubs, when we're doing a lot of uh, when we're, we're doing a lot of beef ribs at a time, when you have those mixed rubs, uh, sometimes while you're going through through and like getting lower and lower in the bottle, it'll start to not mix right. The pepper right. will start coming out last. Won't be even. Or the lowries will be stuck in the bottom, or your smallest your smallest uh, ingredient will be stuck at the bottom of that. Of yeah. that rub. So basically, we just we took the pepper out of the all, out of all of our rubs and did it first, and then we did the Lowry second. So you make or, sure you get it on there. Yeah, you make sure. And flavor is the most important thing for us, uh, and barkiness and flavoring it. So it's really uh, for that, just yeah. for your bark and look, your bark looking right and your flavor being right. Well, you told you taught me something at one point. You know, if you put another rub on first, your pepper might kind of bounce off. So if you yeah. want that pepper on there, put it on first. Yeah, this too. this is so small, it takes up more like surface, what is this? surface area. This is actually uh, Lowry's and Beef Boyan mixed together. Love it. Lowry's and Beef Boyan, and there's some other secret spices. No, I'm, yeah. jo I'm joking. <laughs> but it's just Lowry's and uh, Beef Boyan. So uh, I'm going to take that and... So if you had to guess for everyone at home watching, what's the ratio of pepper to that Lowry's beef bouillon mix? I want to say we we don't do a whole lot of pepper on the beef ribs because they 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 take on so much smoke because they're unwrapped and they shrink up so much that you're not you're not too worried about the uh, the bark. Yeah. So we don't do a lot. Of, we do more pepper on the brisket for sure than this right here. You know, yeah, it's pretty it. pretty spacious, right? Um, so I want to say it's like. 60 40. Okay. I want to say more Lowry's. I want to say more Lowry's and Beef Boyan than, than pepper for sure. Well, this is what I'm I really would going call on. A I'm really going season. on the heavy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Cause I can only see the meat like right here. <laughs> yeah. I'm really going heavy and then I'm going to just going to uh, pat it in. If you had all the time in the world and you're cooking for the restaurant, how long would you let the seasoning sit before you smoked them? Um, maybe 30, 30 minutes. Probably 30 minutes. Just kind of let it sit there and kind of get wet a little bit and I'll just throw it in. Yeah. Cool. But, uh, but yeah, for the most part, yeah, the restaurant we. Season it and then we throw it right on. Okay. <laughs> well, hell, if that's what you do at the restaurant, let's just go put them on. Let's do it. He's a beaut. Oh yeah, this is our uh, new 500 gallon mill scale smoker. So I saw this green tank in the mill scale yard and then when I heard you were getting it, I was automatically super jealous. Yeah, yeah, it is, it is probably the coolest tank I've ever seen. I love it. Yeah. 
So, uh, so yeah, I'm just gonna put these on. Uh, really no trick to it. Uh, just the the long bones facing towards the uh, the fire and and this like smaller size towards the smokestack and that's really really what I'm looking for. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I know we're cooking with post oak. All post oak. All post oak. Uh, so basically, uh, I'm gonna do an hour and an hour really smoky about 200 um, with the damper closed, the door closed, and then after that I'm gonna go about seven eight hours at 300. You're putting heavy smoke on it at yeah. first and then letting it ride. Yeah, I wanna I wanna hit it with a lot of smoke. This is when it's gonna, gonna get its most smoke flavor, is right when it's raw and it's kind of you know starting to sweat and stuff like that. That's when it's gonna get the most smoke flavor. So I hit it with a lot right then. No wrap, no spritz. Cook it right on through. No wrap, no spritz. Uh, I'm just gonna take it until it's nice and crispy. The fat's super rendered. The, the top fat that we left on and the internal fat is like super is rendered out as well. I love it. How long do you think it's gonna take for this rack? Uh, I would say about eight hours. So good news for our viewers at home. <laughs> they don't have to wait eight yeah. hours. Yes. Because, as you change your gloves, what's behind door number two? Door number two. Whoa! Look so, at that. Yeah, this is a this is a rack that I put on uh, about eight hours ago. Uh, what I'm looking for is basically the bark to be set really nicely, uh, which, which this it, is. Like which it is. is yes. Yeah, the bark's awesome. It's beautiful. Very very nice. And then uh, basically all I do is I know I, I check around seven hours, and then I know for sure they're usually always done at eight hours. So uh, all I do is kind of pick it up. I just kind of give it a good a feel. Yeah, yeah, I give it a flex, and I make sure that the the meat I'm feeling is tender. Yeah, and it is. Nice. It's and good soft. to go. Yeah, I don't want it to like be. I don't want the you know the bones to be falling out stuff like that. I just want it to be a nice tender rack. Yeah, <laughs> it looks. But great. that's pretty much it. And uh, basically, all I do is uh, while it's resting, I hit it one time with some tallow, which which will do, and uh, that's pretty much it. Make it look nice and yeah. pretty. And Make it look nice and pretty. If anything got too crispy, that tallow should help a little bit. And then you saw how heavy we seasoned it. The tallow will kind of yeah, help with that as well. That so, a little. Yeah. Some people might have thought it looked a little salty, a little tallow to mellow that out. Yeah, it'll 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 mellow out for sure. Let's get in, uh, rest these, and eat these. Yeah, let's do it. All right. So the beef ribs have been resting for about an hour, just mm -hmm. right here at ambient temperature in the pit room. Mm -hmm. uh, you told me we we're gonna go about an hour and a half, so we wanted to show everybody what do we got next. Yeah, so we rest them for about an hour. The last half hour, uh, before we let it rest, uh, I'm just gonna hit it with a little bit of tallow. Tallow is just fat that we've cooked down from the briskets that we've trimmed, so uh, that's pretty much all we can do with it, is just pour it on some stuff. So uh, we're gonna take a little bit of this um, and pour it on. And I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but with a no wrap beef rib, pretty crunchy bark, a lot of seasoning. This is kind of, I won't say counteracting that, but tell us why it you like to put a little tallow. It, it doesn't completely uh, counteract it. It doesn't make, it doesn't soften it up all the way. It just uh, just helps a little bit with any any parts that are too crispy or if anything, you know, dried out or if it looks, if it's too clumpy or the bark got uh, damaged in any way, the, the tallow will help it kind of stay okay. better. And uh, and yeah, we just like, uh, like I said, we have a ton of it, so might as well. Yeah. <laughs> So about 30 more minutes and we can finally get to eat these beauties. Yeah, yeah, 30 more minutes. All right. Well, that was the longest 30 minutes of my life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> these things smell awesome. Yeah, yeah, and they're, uh, they're ready to go. As you see, the tallow's kind of dried up. There's, I mean, you really can't tell that we even put tallow on it. So yeah. uh, basically, I'm just gonna cut them. Okay. I'm gonna cut uh, right, through the, right in the middle of the two bones. All right, man, look at that smoke, juice, fat so rendered. It's very, very, very rendered. Uh, super juicy still uh, for, for not being wrapped. Um, this is kind of the smaller bone on, the, on this side, so not too bad, but um, uh, let me cut this up a little piece. Yeah. That's like epic bark. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's crispy, it's crispy. I like it like that. Same, same here. As you see, there's not a whole whole lot of meat on this one. There we go. Oh, man, that bark. I keep saying <laughs> it's that. Tender, it's tender, yeah. All right, here we go. Cheers, y'all. Dude. Like I say, all my friends' barbecue joints, I, I quit. I can't <laughs> compete. Ah, oh, that's good. That was a good bite. That was really good. That was so good. The crunch of that bark, the seasoning. I see beef ribs on Instagram all the time, and I kind of giggle at times 
Because people don't render the fat properly. Yeah. You know, that's a huge deal. And God, that is so good. That's the main focus. I gotta tell you, thank you so much for doing this. Um, I, you know, by the way, I think you're gonna win the award for most appearances on the Meat Church channel <laughs> this past year. It's a very prestigious <laughs> so, yeah. award. I don't uh -huh. know what the prize is, but it is prestigious, so thank you. I know y'all are crazy busy. Um, and so I, I just appreciate you taking yeah, the time yeah, to, to share with our absolutely. audience. Absolutely, anytime, anytime. I'm honored to be on here. Y'all gotta check out his YouTube channel before I get out of here. I'll put a little link up here. Uh, Jerby has an amazing YouTube channel. He gives like, he, this dude has the knowledge. Trust me <laughs> on that one. I Man, try, I try. I'm gonna head on down the road. Yeah. I appreciate you having yeah. me. Thanks for coming out. All right, thanks yeah. dude. Thank you. Don't tell Johnny, but I went back in and got myself a little to go. Like, you know, everything's bigger in Texas and why would you not take that home with you? Well, this has been a ton of fun for me. You guys have to come to Goldie's if you haven't already been. They're only open Friday, Saturday, Sunday, 11 to sold out, and you got to get here hours early. But hanging out in line is half the fun. You're going to get to know all these strangers in line. You'll be friends by the time you get to the door. Plus, there'll be free beer sitting in a Yeti out here. It'll be an awesome experience. Well, if you guys dig this, like and subscribe to the channel. We've got lots of our friends that are going to be bringing you uh, their knowledge of barbecue, too, and I'll see you all next time.